these are the best studio monitor ever made. That's the end of the review. Oh, you want more? Fine. When it comes to closed back studio monitor headphones, there's only a small handful of industry classics that have stood the test of time. Sony MDR CD900 ST, the Sony MDR 7506, and the Biodynamic DT770. Name another one. I bet you can't. Everything else has either come and gone, or is too new or young to have proven itself yet. So, how could the Victor HAMX100Z possibly be the best. First of all, there's no mistaking that it takes its design cues from Sony. Here's an MDR V7 for reference. It's fundamentally identical to the CD900ST and 7506. We can see that they both have oval ear cups, flat ear pads, round metal ray housing, and a very simple headband. The headband is where we see the first obvious difference. Unlike Sony's vinyl headband, JVC uses a padded pleather, which is of a lower quality. Actually, when I say JVC, I really mean Victor. This particular headphone was not developed by JVC as we know it, but rather the Victor Studio owned by JVC, or rather JVC Kenwood Victor Entertainment Corporation. It's confusing even for the Japanese, so don't worry about it. Their goal was to create a studio monitor headphone that they could use themselves in their own studio. This tells me one thing. Nothing else was good enough for them, so they had to just go and make their own one themselves. So this headband, however, it's the only major thing holding the headphone back, in my opinion. After an hour or so, I start to get a small hotspot right at the top of the headband where it doesn't actually appear to have any significant padding at all. Obviously such a problem can be easily remedied with aftermarket solutions, but that's not really the point of a review, and I have to remain critical. The only other point where I know there will be some mixed feelings is the cable. It is extremely robust and dense. Obviously there is some memory in such a cable, but it also seems Victor Studio was not messing around when they made this decision. They wanted something that is of the utmost quality. This goes all the way down to their choice of plug, which is an Amphenol. While there doesn't appear to be anything particularly special about Amphenol plugs, the design of the plug grip is very good. So it's likely the audio engineers knew what their favorite plug was and simply requested it. The pads are fundamentally the same cheap wrinkled pleather type which has been around for decades on Sony's studio monitors. So take that however you like. They won't last forever, but they're easy to replace. If you don't like it, try listening to the headphones first and you'll see why these types of earpads are used. Sony's goal with developing the original MDR CD900 was to create a headphone with extremely good microphone localization so they could hear the distance of the singer from the microphone. Sony, in my opinion, achieved their goal. Victor Studio had a bit of a different goal in mind as they wanted to create a sound that had similar localization to the large studio monitors that they were using. So the position of the singer is a bit more distant, like sitting further back from a set of speakers. More on that later. Now comes the interesting part. Let's crack this open and have a look inside. First of all, removing the earpads is a very simple matter. Hi, fair man. I hope you're taking notes and we're presented with a very familiar scene. A metal tuning lens surrounded by an acoustically porous medium, in this case a ring of felt. This is Victor's first big W over Sony. Sony's urethane rings can quite quickly become brittle and decompose depending on how much acidity and moisture they must endure in the studio. Felt will not succumb to this fate so quickly and will be vastly easier to make DIY repairs on in the distant future at home, for example. Opening up the housing, we can get a better look at the driver. Let's just say it's clear that there was some intellectual borrowing going on here. There are the familiar electrical contacts on the back of the magnet housing and symmetrical concentric venting. I don't really need to go into more detail, but if something works, the only thing you can try to do is make a better version of it and then call it your own. But did they? Again, more on that later. 
Obviously, the V7 does not have this kind of synthetic wall damping material, but it is present in the ever popular CD900 ST. So there is another similarity. Now, I bet you're all wondering what the hell this is. It's actually a tuning port. Only JVC Victor will over engineer a headphone to this point. But why? Because it actually works. This port extended sub bass volume a few decibels over its predecessor, the MX10B, which in my opinion was a good decision. The MX10B was very good, if a touch bright sounding at times. All HAMX 100Z units go through rigorous testing, including a 75 hour factory burn in process to ensure no deviation from target specifications after use. That target was clear. The CD900 ST. There's no doubt in my mind that they wanted something same, but different. If we overlay graph averages of the CD900 ST with the HAMX 100Z, there is almost no deviation. Accounting for unit variation and possible measuring variables, they appear to be almost fundamentally the same headphone. There are, however, a few significant differences that must be addressed. First of all, the bass. They sound about the same. Secondly, the mids. They sound like the same headphones. And finally, the treble. Good thing I'm getting bored of this running gag because this is where it ends. The MX100Z's treble is significantly better than the CD900 ST. It has far better extension, air, and detail. This is where the Victor takes the MX100Z from a great headphone to a legendary headphone. The imaging is also excellent. A medium-sized and precise stereo image opens up in your head that sounds like the main singer could be no more or less than a couple of meters in front of you. In terms of audio philosophy, I don't think this is better or more correct compared to Sony's CD900 ST philosophy of putting the sound up closer in a small stage. These two headphones were made with different goals for different purposes. Wait, hang on, there's, there's more. What if I told you these were also the best sounding small form factor wired close back headphones ever made? I mean, if you can forgive the extra long wire or have the DIY chops to modify it, they could even be the best sounding portable headphone. Let's go back to the graph. Here's an overlay of the HAMX100Z with MDRZ1000 pads. At the cost of some upper mid range and treble energy, there's a vastly superior sub bass performance. This is a combination I was happily using for years, but recently a new ear pad has been found. Let's overlay the new graph. The same awesome bass response, upper mid range is mostly preserved and treble extension is also improved. This graph was made using Edifier W820BT pads. So for outdoor portable use, I haven't heard anything that sounds this good. According to online sources, the newer HAMX100V has less bass and a more pronounced mid-range, so I will stick with this for now. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.